Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and today we're gonna be talking about everyone's favorite red boy, Kirishima. Kirishima has definitely become one of the fandom's most liked characters since he's a true friend and a manly hero at heart, and he has quite a bit of focus in My Hero Academia Season 4. In this video, we'll be discussing what he goes through in My Hero Academia Season 4, Episode 5, and talking all about his unbreakable spirit. Now, I've got some art specifically commissioned for this video and a lot of art specifically commissioned for this season, thanks to at the Johnny Azad on Twitter. I'm gonna link him in the description. He's gotten a lot of art requests from me for this season and he's knocked everything out of the park. So I can't wait to show you guys his art for Kirishima, which is the first that I'll be revealing this season. If you don't follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple, you might not have seen me teasing the art and various other things. So make sure you're following me on there if you're over 18 plus, of course, to stay in the loop for future reveals. With all that said, let's get to breaking down Kirishima's Wild Patrol after that intro. Okay, so where is Kirishima and why? We've been following the internships of a few characters during the internship arc where our students group up with pro heroes to get actual work experience. Of course, Deku finds himself at Night Eye's agency with Mirio, where he plans on proving to Night Eye that he's worthy of being All Might's successor. We also see that Ochako and Suyu are teamed up with Ryukyu, the number nine hero, and Nejire, another member of the big three. So where is the third member of the big three, Amajiki Tamaki? He's actually working with a new hero to the story, Fatgum, who readers of My Hero Academia Vigilantes will recognize. Fatgum is a large hero and he definitely stands out in a crowd, and he is the hero that Kirishima actually interns under. He tells Kirishima that the agencies in the area need people who are good at fighting and getting right into the thick of it. Because this agency is in the Kansai region, and their job is patrolling the crowded streets of Asuha City, which is filled with street punks, gangsters, and drugs drug users. Now Kirishima takes on this internship because Fourth Kind wasn't able to take him on this time, but he definitely gets all of the experience that he could ask for while working with Fat Gum and Sun Eater. Now as the trio of heroes is patrolling the town, Kirishima really learns how unconfident Sun Eater is. We've seen a bit of this in season 3 with Sun Eater not really being confident enough to look at the class in the eye and being extra shy, but we learn that it's even difficult for him to take praise or be told that he's an excellent hero because that puts a lot of pressure on him to live up to those words, and obviously he really feels that pressure. Kirishima explains to him that he can relate to that feeling because although everyone in his class is getting stronger and advancing in their hero studies, he feels like he's getting left behind and you've got to feel for him here a bit. It's normal for there to be standout students in any given hero course classroom, but Kirishima is in a class of the future number one hero Deku who has pretty much the greatest quirk ever, let's be honest. And besides that, there are other monsters in the class like Shoto, the son of the number two hero Endeavor, who has an amazing quirk that was brought together to become a perfect version of Endeavor's quirk while also having a ridiculous ice controlling ability. And finally, even though he's his best friend, Bakugo has to be another person in the class that Kirishima really looks to as one of the more amazing members since he's a straight A student who never loses and he can fly and do all sorts of amazing things with his explosion quirk. It's hard to see how Kirishima who can just harden himself up and take a bit of damage and punch really hard can live up to characters that can cover stadiums in ice or cause huge missile like explosions. But he wants to do the best to live up to the expectations of everyone around him and even his own expectations to keep up with those guys. Well, in this episode, we quickly get into it with us seeing a crime in progress and Kirishima and the others happen to be on the scene. A group of criminals in blazers and dress clothes that remind me of some sort of weird My Hero Academia mobsters come running down the street and through the thoroughfare who apparently had been working on someone else's turf and now had to run for it before they got caught. They run smack dab into Fat Gum, who uses his quirk Fat Absorption to literally absorb the gangsters into his body like a weird sort of Majin Buu technique. Fat Gum isn't able to get all of them because one of them actually has a really similar quirk to Ed Shots, but Tamaki or Sun Eater uses his quirk to form octopus tentacles on his hand and he wraps them around the villain, tying him up before whacking him with a powerful clam handed strike. This is all thanks to Sun Eater's quirk Manifest, which I've explained in my Who Are the Big Three at UA High video, which you can just click on the card above to go watch and learn all about the Big Three's quirks, but quick and simple, it's a quirk that allows him to manifest body parts and attributes 
from the things that he eats. So if he eats something of octopus or chicken or clam, he can give himself wings or claws, and he can turn his body parts into octopus tentacles and giant clam shells. It really is a pretty technical quirk, but it also allows him to have different loadouts for different missions, and that makes him extremely reliable as long as he has prep time. He's honestly a pro at this point, just like the other big three, and he can probably handle a lot of this himself, but something happens here that kickstarts Kirishima's fight in the episode. You see, a man in the crowd who was actually with these villains manages to keep his calm and not run along with them, but that makes him feel like he's done nothing to help his friends. He aims a gun at our heroes and actually fires off a shot at Tamaki, hitting him in the arm. Now, guns aren't something that we've actually seen used too much in the My Hero Academia world, because you've gotta imagine that the best form of gun control is having heroes who can literally blow your head off with punches or techniques if you seem like you have a weapon, and quirks tend to just be a better option for committing crimes. But this gun has something different about it. What we see get shot out is actually something that we've already seen this season, and that is the quirk erasing bullet. If you recall, when Compress went to attack Jasaki during episode two of the season, he was hit by something and his quirk wouldn't activate, leading to his arm getting blown off by Jasaki once he got to him. These bullets are extremely dangerous to the hero specifically because it basically makes them regular humans for a limited time, completely cutting off their access to using their quirks. As a hero in the field, you can imagine the horror you'd feel if you were fighting a group of villains in an alleyway without backup or something, and suddenly you couldn't use your quirk. What if suddenly you were just a normal civilian just like anybody else. The villain lets loose with this weapon, aiming at Kirishima and getting a direct headshot on him. However, he definitely made a miscalculation. You see, one does not simply shoot Kirishima with bullets. Kirishima's quirk, of course, lets him harden his body, and that's exactly what he does before the bullet makes contact, causing the bullet to shatter and ricochet off of his head, leaving his quirk completely intact. Kirishima hardens his body like we're used to seeing, and this villain's gun seems to jam or something, meaning that it's an all quirk battle from this point on, something that this guy is not willing to do as he makes a run for it. Fat Gum starts running for him, but he gets distracted by Sun Eater, who's still not able to use his quirk, but this makes room for Kirishima to finally have his time to shine. Kirishima chases this guy through the city in the alleyways, chastising him for leaving his friends behind, even though he made such a big fuss about saving them with these bullets. Was it all a lie from this guy? You know, like, what kind of man is this guy if all he can do is run? In fact, Kirishima directly tells this guy that using a gun to shoot somebody and then getting scared and running away is the least manly thing that you could do. Kirishima corners this guy in an alleyway with a dead end, and the guy desperately realizes that all he can do at this point is fight back and try to defeat Kirishima to get away. Kirishima runs right into this guy and the villain reveals to us that he has a quirk that lets him create small blades on his body. These blades might be effective against a normal person since this guy went straight for the face and that might have actually killed a normal person, but all in all they seem pretty wimpy and they aren't enough to even scratch Kirishima's hardened skin. Letting Kirishima connect with a red counter, which like most of his moves is just a solid hardened punch. After this guy's face gets knocked into the dirt, he starts crying like a baby about how his quirk is so weak, but Kirishima Kirishima's quirk is so powerful. Why can't he save his friends even though they're villains? Why does he have to come up against someone with such an unfair advantage? He laments these things and says he just wanted to be strong, and Kirishima's manly and kind heart actually kind of feels for the guy. He helps him up so that he can arrest him and bring him to the others, but this is where we learn that this battle isn't over yet. In fact, it's just getting started. The guy pulls out a weird syringe capsule of some kind and shoves it into his neck, shooting some sort of substance into his body as he starts yelling and acting really strange and almost like a zombie for a moment. Kirishima freaks out because this is all new to him and he has no idea what this guy is doing when suddenly, blades everywhere. Massive and long blades shoot out from all over this guy's body, pushing Kirishima back and covering the alleyway in sharp sword-like blades that are way more powerful and way longer than the little box cutter-like blades that this guy's been using so far. The villain starts laughing and smiling and looking really deranged, but what happened here? It seems like he took some sort of drug and his quirk went from being some weak quirk that would probably be really good for unbox therapy on YouTube to being pretty much an upgraded version of Moonfish's quirk from the forest training arc. He starts walking down this alleyway towards Kirishima, and his blades keep extending into the buildings around them, slicing them and everything in their way up. Kirishima realizes that now, he's the only thing standing between this guy and the rest of the city. This guy is in an alleyway surrounded by buildings, but what would happen if he found his way into the middle of the main street, where people were walking and shopping and having a good night? Kirishima realizes that right here, right now, 
He has to put a stop to this guy. As Kirishima's telling civilians to run away and back off, the blades start flying towards him and even though he's in his hardened state, he's still getting cut. This is really impressive because it took a bunch of Bakugo's explosions to finally wear Kirishima down, but this guy isn't wearing Kirishima down. He's legit cutting into his heart and flesh and making Kirishima bleed. The villain starts screaming at Kiri and laughing at him, telling him that he shouldn't have looked down on him from that high and mighty position, preaching about things like justice and strength, because now is the time for outcasts and weaklings to take center stage. That's very much a big theme that we're going to continue seeing in the story, and with substances like Trigger, the quirk enhancing drug that you can learn way more about thanks to my sidekick Dan Exclaims, who has a video explaining the drug's origins all the way back in My Hero Academia Vigilantes, average quirk users and villains who aren't really all that dangerous on their own can see massive boosts in their power. Mix this with the quirk erasing bullet, and it really makes for a scary situation where villains are increasing their power while straight up taking away the power that our heroes have to protect the population. Kirishima can't let this guy be one of those people, and he can't let himself become one of those heroes that has his ability to defend people taken away. Because after all, he should be one of the most able to defend others with his amazingly hardened skin. As a wave of blades is all gonna reach Kirishima at once, possibly brutally injuring him or maybe even killing him, it happens. Kirishima starts having a flashback. And if you watch these X character awakens their quirk videos, you know what that means. Something is coming. He thinks back to All Might telling him that with his hardening, he should forget about any sort of cool tricks that he can do and just focus on becoming a bulldozer that powers through anything, smashing anything before him to pieces. Kirishima thinks about how he doesn't have any special techniques or interesting moves that aren't just brute force attacks. Bakugo specifically tells him that he's crazy strong, one, because he was the only person willing to be Bakugo's unbreakable horse and take the force of his explosions during the sports festival, but two, he did it again when it was time to save Bakugo during the hideout raid in season three, proving and showing that he's willing to stand through anything and power through. We cut back to the current time and once again, we see these blades flying towards Kirishima but it's time. Now, when I make these videos entitled them X character awakens their quirk, it's just a term that I like to use much like how it's used in the Naruto Storm games. In those games, when a character is at low health or in a certain dire situation, they can awaken and become even more powerful and even use new abilities and take on different forms that they have, but it's in a moment of desperation or a moment of growth. The title for this video, Kirishima awakens his quirk, comes from this scene here, where Kirishima thinks that instead of thinking what he should do and finding different ways to deal with this guy, he just has to hard in himself more. If the bladed quirk user's only offense is that he has really sharp blades and the only problem is that they're cutting and pushing Kirishima back, then Kirishima just has to harden and harden to the point where that'll no longer be an issue. He starts to harden his entire body and he even thinks to himself that he's hardening his soul, which is one of the manliest statements ever. He pushes forward while he's hardening and we see the blades going towards his eyes and mouth and everywhere and right as they connect with Kirishima's body, snap. They shatter into pieces. Kirishima looks slightly pushed back, but he brings his head forwards and gets into his heroic pose and thinks about how this is the culmination to all of the training he's done so far. It all led up to his maximum durability raising higher and higher, giving Kirishima a new form that he likes to call Red Riot Unbreakable. This art here that I commissioned from at the Johnny Azad on Twitter shows Kirishima in this new form, and you can see how he looks really devilish and ridiculous with his skin being hardened to such a high level. It's completely jagged and twisted, and it looks pretty painful, honestly, but Kirishima has claws and a ridiculously hardened body that isn't gonna falter anymore just because his villain powered up using some weird illegal substance. Kiri becomes a powerful wall between this guy and the population of the city, and we hear all sorts of cracks and clangs coming from all over Kirishima Kirishima's body as the hardened parts all smash and rub against each other while he moves. Now he can only hold this form for 40 seconds or so, but he thinks to himself that he's unbeatable in that time, so he has to strike now. He rushes towards the villain and the villain lets out a full focus wave of blades and swords that shoot only out of his chest and middle body, pretty much dedicating every single blade and his full power to hitting Kirishima and sending him flying while also trying to turn him into mincemeat. While these blades are all connecting with Kirishima and the the villain is expecting to see a bloody mess on the other side, he starts to get pushed back. He starts being forced back even though he is the one that's attacking with all the blades and shooting them out of his own body. We see that Kirishima is taking the attack head on, but it isn't moving him. 
he plants his two feet in the ground and thinks about how the people behind him need to be kept safe. How the people behind him still haven't gotten away, so he can't allow the villain to gain a single foot of ground on him. In that moment, Kirishima destroys all of the blades of a series of punches and smashing, flying towards the quirk user and hitting him full force in the stomach with a devastating finishing technique that Kirishima calls his ultimate move, Red Gauntlet. I've also seen it translated as Red Gun Turret in the Viz translation, so let's see what Crunchyroll and other streaming sites go with. Either way, this devastating blow sends the enemy quirk user flying through the alleyway, and right on cue, Kirishima's body completely dehardens and he goes back to normal, with his time limit being up. Surprisingly enough, the villain still isn't knocked out, because Kirishima doesn't yet have the experience to know that he probably should have used that ability on the guy's head, but he was probably worried about the fact that such a blow might injure this guy long term, or or worse, maybe even kill him. His kindness in sparing that guy actually backfires just a tiny bit, and once again he tries to explain to the villain that he understands that the villain just wanted to be stronger and save his friends, but he can't let him go just because he can relate to him. Kirishima even starts to explain a little bit of his backstory that we haven't seen yet, but it gets rudely interrupted by the villain who shoots blades out of his back while he's laying on the ground to fly out of the alleyway. We will get Kirishima's backstory this season, and once again I have a whole thumbnail of custom art for that one featuring young Kirishima his opponent for a battle later on, but for now, Kirishima breaks the villain's back blades, and the villain flies straight into Fat Gum, getting absorbed into Fat Gum's fat. He does try to destroy Fat Gum and cut him up from the inside with his blades, but thanks to Fat Gum's huge size and his quirk, he's able to put an end to this guy once and for all, knocking him out and smothering him with his fat until he can't breathe and passes out. Now, as much as Fat Gum and Sun Eater help to take down the others, the real hero of the day is Red Riot, who had this crazy life or death battle in this alley, and there are people there who witnessed it. This moment actually serves as Red Riot's hero debut, and what a wild one it was. He defended everyone that he set out to and showed everyone that standing behind him is the right decision because he's truly an unbreakable wall that'll never crumble when it's time to defend what's right against villains. Sun Eater even tells Kirishima that he's really similar to Mirio in the fact that he's a bright ball of sunlight who shined over all of them that night. We end this video with Fatcom having a really uneasy feeling about the bullet that he saw and the quirk boosting drug, so they take Sun Eater to the hospital, and that's the end of their patrol for the night. So what do you think about Kirishima's new unbreakable form, and are you excited to see it again? The UA girls actually get a really, really great scene in this episode of some amazing animation, but we'll be seeing Kirishima getting some ridiculous animator love later this season when he puts the hero costume back on to fight a quirk user that may even be a match for his unbreakable form. Expect to learn way more about Red Riot and his backstory and where he's going moving forward, but for now, that's all I have to talk about as far as this video goes, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon and then click notify on the drop down menu to get notifications whenever I upload and comment below what your favorite moment of the episode was and let me know how much you love the art from the Johnny Azad that I got commissioned because there is a lot more coming. Please go to his Twitter and show him all sorts of love and just tell him how thankful you are for all the love that he showed our boy Red Riot and tell him how excited you are for other art that I'm going to be dropping with him later this season because we have a really really good collaborative team thing going on. Was your favorite moment of the episode the giant battle with the UA girls or was it Kirishima Unbreakable? Let me know. It's Pineapple. I'll see you guys later. Peace.